Welcome to PA Timber Ghost. Today is April 30th, and today this video will be about fishing the Topahawken. Uh, I haven't fished this area for about 10 years, and there are definitely a lot of changes. We have a new uh, new path going through here. There is a uh, sewer line that comes down that road, and uh, all the trees are gone. They uh, changed the old walk walking path. This is what's left of the old walk path. And uh, there's only about a hundred yard section of that. The rest of it was cut down and plowed back. And on this side over here, they uh, cleared out all the woods down to the water treatment plant. And uh, most of the woods are also gone there. Let's see what the, what the stream looks like today. It looks uh, very high. But uh, even though it looks high out there, it's actually very shallow. It's usually only about waist deep. And uh, these are the, the old steps are still here that go down. Looks like they've been repaired a few times. There's a couple of ropes that help you get down into the stream. We are below the spillway at Blue Marsh Lake. And the water comes out of the bottom of the dam, which is, which is actually very healthy for the fish. Because it keeps the water temperature down. This area is special regulations, artificial lure. And this area is catch and release till the beginning of June. And then from June to uh, Labor Day, you can keep fish out of here. You're allowed to keep three a day. Plenty of wildlife in here. You can hear all the birds in the background. Stay with us today and we will uh, see what we can pull out of here today. I'm gonna try to just a few different places today. I see a lot of caddis skittering across the top of the water. A bunch of swallows going by, chimney swifts. I see some fish coming up over here. Excessive amounts of wildlife here. There's a there's a herring on the other side, a blue herring. Public enemy number one. Blue herrings to me are like a flying coyote. They will kill and eat everything in sight. I uh, have a very big dislike for blue herrings. I don't see him over there in the bank. He's looking at me. Probably gonna start squawking at me here in a few minutes and take off. I see some fish rising. I didn't bring the fly rod today. I should have. He's looking at me. There he goes. Blue herring away. Now I got the hold of myself. See what we can do here. May have to adjust my split shot to get the right drift through this hole. Yep. Yeah, take off some of my lead. Off one of my split shots. There's some hungry fish in there. You can see them jumping, eating them caddises. I, uh, pulled up and put my waders on and I have a caddis caddis is inside of my van already
Hopefully we can uh, catch some fish today. Something just something just bit the end of my spinner. This uh, fish up here can be very finicky. This area sees a lot of fishing pressure. This is a special regulation area, trophy trout waters. So you can't keep anything out of here till June. There we go. Another another one on and off. Tighten my drag up here a little bit. See if three is a charm here. Fish in here are very strong and very feisty. Yeah, I think that's the bottom. He's gonna bite again. He smashed my spinner twice. I saw him, it looked like a brownie. Oh, there's another bite. Man, something got a hook up here. It's a hefty bite there. I'm biting the heck out of that spinner. Biting the heck out of it. Fish off. It's about the fourth fish I missed in here. There's a rock out there too. Big rock. You can really see them fish jumping over there. They are uh, gorging themselves on the insects that are hatching coming downstream. Yeah, where'd that spinner go? You wanna get it? That time I got gotcha. My first hookup, feisty rainbow. Let's see him coming over here. There's some feisty fish in here. Look at him. That is a beautiful rainbow. Come here. <laughs> beautiful. Beautiful. Come here. Just does not want to sit still. Gotcha. Okay. 
Very beautiful rainbow. About 12 inches. Very healthy. There are some scrappy trout in here. Very scrappy. Now it's raining on me. Getting a gauntlet today. High water, rain. See if we can get another rainbow out of there. That put the fish down. Nothing like a rainbow bite. It's definitely a bone jarring experience when they connect with your, with your lure or your fly on the end. They, uh, they bite hard. Fish number two. We got got a little small mouth. What we got here. He's just a little scrappy. And another. Oop. Even he's feisty. Oop. There he goes. Back in. Nice little small mouth there. Beautiful red eye. Okay. Yeah, they're starting to come back up again. All right, let's take a couple casts at the end here. Very beautiful in here. There's a giant oak tree that came down. I wonder how old that is. See all the way upstream how beautiful that is, all the birds. You can see up in the air here how many birds are actually flying around above my head after the bugs. Pretty blue sky. Clouds are drifting by. There's a trout going to town out in front of me keeps popping up. See if we can get a bite out of the spot. So pretty here. Fishing partner at the bottom. He's a, uh, it looks like he's snagging up on a lot. He keeps breaking his line off. I saw him pull a few, a few trout in it down there. I saw him pull a few fish in down there. I keep uh, hooking up on the bottom here. It must be pretty shallow here. Yeah. I'm gonna have to take my take some weight off. Lots of rocks on the bottom here. Yeah, I think we got it. I'm gonna have to take take that split shot off there.
make a couple sweeps through this spot here. It's pretty shallow here. Not all these fish coming to the top are trout. Some of them are bass, other little shiners. There's bluegills in here. They'll actually come up to the top like that too. You have to find a deeper pocket here. That is not it. Okay, I walked upstream further. This area is pretty shallow. I'll see a lot of the big holes look like they're filled in up here. So these are deflectors that narrow the channel of the stream. If you look upstream here, you can see all the deflectors up there that were built by Trout Club. There's a tree in the middle. There's one growing further out in the water. There's a big hole right here. I see caddis is fluttering around out there, but I don't see any trout jumping. So uh, we're going to fish this hole in this little chute here, and then we're going to go down to uh, down the road further to the Reavers Bridge, which is down below. So let's see what we can find in this hole. Here comes my buddy. Gives another blue herring. That's probably the one I scared earlier. He's uh, going back to the spot where I was this morning. <clears throat> Let's see where he lands. He's going to land on the other side. This water is tough to walk in. There used to be a trail on that right hand side coming up, but it's uh, it's all overgrown. There's a new trail up on top of the bank up here on the left. Now that I know that's there, I'll have to walk up that side. So I'm going to try to get Underneath of that hemlock tree there, it looks like a nice shoot up against that ledge. Let's see what's hiding under this hemlock here. A nice uh, stone wall on the other side. Looks pretty shallow in here too. I don't see any other uh, big shoots like down below where the fish are all congregated into one spot. We'll fish this stretch here, and then we'll go down to Reber's Rood. Down to the open great bridge. Should be a bass or something hiding on this edge. really shallow in here. Okay, new fish. There's some interesting flowers. They're really pretty. And of course, my arch nemesis. It's three, three shiny leaves, poison ivy. This is my arch enemy of the woods. <laughs> There's another one there. Yeah, these flowers are pretty. Okay, new fish. I'm going to head down the road. Okay, I moved downstream further. Now I'm at Reber's Road Bridge. I have the metal, metal bridge behind me. Here's some more, some more interesting flowers. These actually look blue here. Lots of, lots of flowers popping up along the Topahawken. Here's the metal bridge. <clears throat> Very noisy, open, great bridge. The water looks a little high in here. I'm going to fish this area for about an hour and then I'm going to walk down the bike trail to a big hole that's down around the corner and uh, see what we can catch down there. I'm going to change the, back to the chest mount because the water's too deep. Um, this stream is actually very wide, 50 or 60 yards across in some places. And uh, 
it's actually a little bit deeper down here than below the spillway okay so let's change up mounts here and see what we can catch yeah i don't think that was a rock maybe there's a bass hiding in here Here's a steamroller. I've never, uh, never seen anybody steamroll this path yet. Now I'm downstream further, and uh, this is my last, last place to fish below the Reber's Bridge. I uh, haven't got a bite yet. Ran into another fisherman, and uh, he caught a couple, couple small trout and a bass. So we'll see uh we'll see what we can get out of here. Steamroller passed me coming back down. He was uh flattening that bike path out. Now I know the secret why that trail looks that way. It's very well kept. I see a couple caddises floating by. They must be caddis day. Take the long bomb out there. Got a little tap. I think that was a rock. This area in here usually has a couple fish. No bite or nothing. Starting to have my doubts. Not a bite or a nibble. Let's go down here between these two big boulders. slowly water's deep in here it's already past my knees <laughs> yeah I'm not I'm not in the mood for a swim today not in that cold water there's a rock there feeling along with my feet as I go and the bottom is going up and down so This area is a special reg area, so you're not allowed to have any bait. And yet, there's a pack of eagle claw hooks, size one. So this is why this area has no, uh, no fish in it. This is a high poaching area. So my chances of actually catching anything out here are gonna be very slim. Very pretty area in here. This used to be my dad's favorite fishing spot. He and I both caught quite a few trout in here over the years. So here's a fish story. My dad had a dice rainbow on a stringer. He was planning on putting it in a frying pan for breakfast. And uh, he felt something pulling on it. He started backing up and there was a snapping turtle hanging on to the other end of his, of his trout he had on the stringer. And uh, he kept backing up on the bank till he got away from it. The snapping turtle came up out of the water hissing at him. <laughs> so the snapping turtle didn't get a fish dinner. And my dad enjoyed his trout. Okay, that's our, that's our funny fish story today. And uh, 
water doesn't look as high down here. You can still see the big rocks sticking out. You can uh, probably hear the geese in the background. Okay, now we're gonna go uh, try a few other streams. We're gonna try a small tributary that dumps into the lake, up above the lake and on another part and see if we can have any better luck up there. So far I've caught one rainbow. I missed five and yeah, one smallmouth. That's a total for today. Okay, we're gonna go upstream now and uh, we're also gonna take a break here and eat some lunch. There's a bike path along the tully. That's where the steamroller went by me this morning. We're headed back to the vehicle. We're gonna go eat some lunch and uh, fish a couple other spots. We're gonna go upstream further up above the lake. And this is a uh, very pretty area in here. This area gets a lot of use when it gets warm. Here's a pedestrian bridge. There's a open grate. Reber's Road Bridge. That's very noisy when cars go across. You look down in the Topahawk and you can see the big trees that are uprooted by probably one of the one of the storms in the past few months. There are a lot of trees knocked down in here. That was an island and uh, all the trees were keeping the island intact so that'll probably wash away now. I think there's another truck across the bridge. It's a walk in this morning. And uh, we have a few fish to show for it, but it's definitely a very pretty day. I like to take Friday off from work. That's usually the best time to fish because nobody's in the stream. Um, very minimum pressure. There's a, there's a shot of the bridge looking back. There's a Uni Canal bicycle and walking trail. You can see the mileages and it tells you how far down the trail you are. Okay, now we're gonna go. I'm gonna go up across the bridge. Try to walk across the bridge as fast as I can. I don't want to get hit by a car. They uh, go across the bridge very quickly. So we'll see how long it takes me to get across the bridge. I am going to walk in the traffic, that way nobody can sneak up on me. And uh, my metal cleats on the bottom of my boots don't, don't do too well on this steel bridge. Okay. There's a shot from the top of the bridge. Stream number two, this is a very small stream. And uh, this stream actually goes into Blue Marsh. And I will not name the name to keep it anonymous. Uh, sometimes there's fish in here, sometimes there's not. And uh, we'll see what's in here today. Not a very good day for my allergies today. My eyes are watering terrible, all the tree pollen in here. My uh, wading jacket is actually turning green. So. Makes it more challenging trying to see what you're doing when your eyes are watering. We're, uh, we're going to fish this street. This we're going to fish this undercut bank here and uh, see what we can get out of here. First cast, first fish. What do we got? That didn't take long. I love fishing these small streams. And uh, let's see what we got here. We got a little brownie. There we go. One cast, one trout. Scrappy little brownie. Up here, we got some feist in him. He thought he was a giant rainbow. That's a scrappy fish. Let's see where he's hooked at. 
he actually got two hooks in him. There we go. Do brown trout have teeth? You look inside there, you can actually see his teeth. Brown trout are fearsome predators. And uh, once a brown trout hits 16 inches, they will start eating whatever's in the stream, including each other, whatever they can fit in your mouth. And that's not bad. One cast, one fish. All right, Let's see what else is hiding under this tree. <clears throat> Starting to rain on me again today. That was a feisty brown trout. Not a very nice day today. It started out nice this morning, but now it's, the wind is blowing and it looks like it's going to rain again. <clears throat> it might be the only fish I catch all day. Throwing it. Yep. Okay, that was it. He was under there by himself. Let's try this other bank here. There's a golf ball. <clears throat> Somebody's golf ball. I found jars of power bait along this stream. Knives, leatherman tools, spinners, all kinds of stuff. If you want to lose it, don't button your pockets up. It'll fall out. Okay. Let's see what we can get out of here. There's another bite. Had another one on. Somebody's giving me a little tap there. Might be a little shiner. See if I'll bite again. Yeah, I think that's a little shiner nibbling on my spinner. bites from that one okay just need to ease around the side here get out of that deep water and we will uh, ease down the sandbank here beautiful undercut banks And it is raining again. I got rained on this morning. Wind swirling around. It was supposed to be partly sunny today. We warm up a little bit. Now it's raining. Well, it'll make the fish bike better. It'll keep some of the other fishermen away. Another bite. You're just biting up a storm today. You want to bite one time now.
Time to pull up the hood. Well, got one fish and four bites. Yeah, he don't want to bite again. Yep, don't want to bite. Bites in there. <coughs> there we go. Fish number two. What do we got? Little tiny brownie. This is what's been tapping my uh Tap of my spinner that I can't get. Little tiny one. And he got him just barely. He's pretty. That there is a native brown trout. Dorsal fin. This little fin back here is not clipped. So. Hopefully you can see him. That's a wild brown trout. You can tell by the spots in the fin up here that's not clipped. I've never caught a never caught a wild brown trout in here. That's my first first native. That's a very beautiful fish. Going through the jungle. Here's something that doesn't belong here. Irises. You must have got washed downstream. A nice little path going through here. We used to fish this stream a lot on the first day of trout, but uh, it got too crowded. And uh, they weren't putting a lot of fish in here. So we quit coming up here. This is always a very nice stream to fish. Not many people fish here. Yeah. I wonder what could be lurking in this one. Feeling pretty good so far. Getting a lot of bites. Let's see what uh let's see what's lurking in this one. Stuck on the bottom. Let's see what's lurking in this spot. Now the sun's out again. It was raining coming down sideways. Nice cold rain. It stopped and now the sun came back out. Well, I'm not sure what's going on with the weather today. Who knows? Got a little bite there. Something uh something hit my spinner and spun it around sideways. Might be another rainbow lurking in here. There's what's lurking in that hole. Jumping fish. That's a, another scrapper. Let's see what this one is. Another rainbow. Let's see if he'll jump again. I'm gonna put the net under him. Right. 
He's just barely hooked. See how easy that came out? Another beautiful rainbow. Nice, easy release. He can go right back where he came from. Let's see what else is hiding in here. Don't seem to be a lot of trout in one spot. They uh, seem to be spread out pretty good, which is a good thing. Let's see if there's another one hiding over there. Should be a few more in this hole. That one feels bigger. Another rainbow. Yeah, he's about the same size as the other one. These fish are strong. Very acrobatic. I'm not going to get the net on this one. Oh, there we go. I didn't even have to pull the hook out of that one. Rainbow number three. Three rainbows, one brownie. Hopefully the camera got that one. Oop, there's another bite. The rainbows hit like a freight train when they bite. Another bite. Still got one lurking in there. You're waiting till it gets almost all the way over here and then you're biting it. And here we go. Rainbow number four. Got him. Another jumper. Beautiful rainbows. You see them sparkling in the sunlight. Another scrapper. We are going to pull him over to the bank. All beautiful fish. Every one of them. He's pretty. There he is. The hook fell right out. <laughs> say cheese. And say cheese, I'll let you go. Rainbow number four. They're definitely giving me a workout today. They were stretching my line out. I'll have to change my four pound test later. Okay, we'll put the camera back here. You can see what I'm doing. You got me all tangled up. They are uh, really stretching my line out today. That one's got me all tangled up. Oh, my line is so stretched it's starting to wrap around the end of my rod. Let's see if we can uh, unravel my line here. It's definitely some fighters there. 
They are definitely some very healthy fish. Did I get it? No. I am still tangled up. There we go. Now we're clear. Ready to go again. Working our way downstream here, picking up a trout here and there. It's very pretty in here. There's another uh, beautiful pocket. Nice and narrow. If I was a fish, I would be hiding in there. I'd be hiding right in that slot. And somebody just bit me. As soon as I put that in there, see what it is. Probably another rainbow. That looks like a bass. That's a very small fish, whatever it is. It's not big enough to get my spinner. Yeah, I think he's done biting. Whatever it is. Loop in my line. That's in there. A couple loops in there. And yeah, no trout in this hole. Downstream, nothing in that spot. We'll uh, see what uh, what else we can find along the stream here. It's a perfect little frog pond there. I hear a frog in there croaking. Very quiet back here today. Um, I haven't run into another person yet. Up along the Topahawken, there's a lot of people walking the trails. And uh, this spot here, I haven't seen anybody. There really aren't any trails near where I'm at. So we're going to continue downstream, maybe for another 100 yards or so. And then uh, we'll see if we can find another spot where I might just call today. We'll uh, see how well we're doing in the next 100 yards here. This is the craziest weather ever. Less, less than five minutes ago, the sun was out. And uh, now the wind is howling like crazy. Pieces of dead trees are falling off. Off of that tree over there, two giant limbs just fell. And uh, I am looking behind me. To make sure nothing is above my head that's gonna land on my head when that wind's howling. Now it's raining sideways and it's cold again. Luckily, I have rain gear on and my chest waders. And uh, you can hear that wind howling. This is like the craziest weather I ever ever heard. I'm afraid to walk over there because the tree limb might snap off of one of them trees and land on top of me. So uh, I'm gonna ride this out on the sandbar. I'm gonna ride this wind gust out on the sandbar till it stops for my own safety. And then uh, when the sun comes back out and this Little rain cloud passes. I will uh, continue to fish downstream here. So we'll see you in a few minutes. Thanks for watching PA Timber Goose. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. Um, it's definitely been a very interesting day between the weather and all the fish that I caught. I haven't caught that many fish for quite a while and uh, it's definitely been very interesting and uh, as always hit that subscribe button and we'll see you on the next video.